Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Young Dad Gaming Reviews, the series where I review, recount and reminisce the games that I grew up on, as well as decide when or if my son will be growing up on the same games, and which one should be avoided for now due to extreme violence, suggestive themes, and or because the game just sucks. Next up, Tomb Raider 2, starring Laura Croft. Wait, we knew that already. Released in 1997, one year after the incredibly successful Tomb Raider, the game with the same name, only now for some reason introducing the main character, is back and better than ever. If Tomb Raider is like cheesecake, then Tomb Raider 2 is like, if someone took a cheesecake and said, you know what would make this even better? Then drizzled caramel on it. Cheesecake Factory, starring Cheesecake. You see how dumb that sounds? But even to someone with a sweet tooth, there can be such a thing as too much sweetness, and Tomb Raider 2 is a very two steps forward, one step back kind of game. How can that be, you may ask? Well sit back, relax, and let's become Tomb Raiders. Starring Laura Croft. Lara finds herself in China searching for the Dagger of Xi'an, an artifact that was rumored to be able to turn the wielder into a dragon. Its previous owner, the Emperor of China, You don't meet a girl like that every dynasty. used it to defeat his armies until it was taken from him by Tibetan monks who hid it inside the Great Wall of China. As Laura is searching the Great Wall for truth about this legend, she is attacked by an assassin named Claudio, a cultist to the Fiamma Nera. If you couldn't guess what their deal is, they worship the dagger and they want it. Kind of coincidental that they just so happen to be searching for this dagger at the exact same time as Laura. This leads Laura to Venice to find the hideout of the cult leader, Marco Bartoli. This dude sounds like he creates designer handbags. Where she ends up getting captured and taken to an oil rig in the middle of the ocean. On the rig, Laura saves a monk from torture and interrogation. As thanks, he tells her that to find the location of the key that unlocks the door that holds the dagger, she'll need to find an artifact that's a key for a door in Tibet to the room that will give her the location to the key to the door to the dagger. Are you lost yet? Me too. This is one thing that always kind of bothered me in adventure games and adventure movies. You always gotta go from point A to point B so you can unlock point C and then realize you gotta go all the way back to point A. It's just, it's, it's a conspiracy. So I decided, oh shit, buddy, I gotta dig a little deeper. There's no Pepe Silva, you gotta be kidding me, I got boxes full of Pepe! From here, she hitches a ride on a submersible to the remnants of a sunken luxury cruise liner. On the sunken ship, she has to fight more of the Fiamma Nera and solve puzzles, as one does. She finds the artifact called the Seraph and heads to Tibet. From here, things start to get a little strange. You're fighting spear-wielding monks, Uzi-toting henchmen, who also fight each other. Oh, and did I mention the yetis? Yeah, we're in Tibet, gotta be yetis. Hop in the fucking car, kids. We're gonna to Tibet to see the yetis. Laura eventually finds the key to the dagger room, only to come face to face with, uh... Horus? The Egyptian god of the sky? Who's super ripped. Hmm. Mm. This better not awaken anything in me. <laughs> After the fight with Pex the Falcon, Lara has a quick car chase and drives from Tibet to the Great Wall of China, which... I mean, okay, it's not impossible, but damn, Lara, that's quite a drive. Now Lara is at the home stretch. Nothing weird should be happening anymore. Except for a, a strange ritual with some impressive choreography. Damn, this is like an interpretive dance. Hollywood superstar Shia LaBeouf. Well, great. Now we're floating in the sky. On jade platforms. Fighting terracotta statues that come to life. The ending gets kind of nuts, and I want to avoid spoilers. So. In Tomb Raider 1, you went to interesting, yet kind of obvious archaeological locations 
While the places you get to explore in Tomb Raider 2 really capture the feeling of mystery and adventure, with a much more fleshed out and deeper story, Tomb Raider 2 knew how to recapture that captivating style again and turn it up to an 11. Much like the first game, there were many issues to start up this game, but luckily again there is a super easy patch that fixes almost everything and cleans up the visuals. One issue I had with this game though is I had to change the regular WASD keys to RDFG. Why? Because just hitting the S key would cause the whole game to crash. You won't believe how many times I accidentally crashed this game because of my habitual nature to press the S key. Also, saving the game is a real pain in my seraph. The game automatically places you on the load screen instead of saving, so when I try to save after a difficult fight or challenging platform puzzle, I might accidentally reload my last save. What's worse is, when I would remember where my save screen was, I might accidentally save over my last one trying to load because I'm focusing too much on the save load screen. Tomb Raider 2 was made using the same engine from the first game, so a lot of the points I made in my last video still hold true. You still have the grid system, which I could just be crazy, but I felt a little different in this one. It's hard to explain, but in my last video I mentioned... Trying to perform a running jump from the middle of this platform will cause Laura to fall off because her character hasn't performed the required amount of action in a grid for your jump to be registered. And in this game, I could swear that less grids were needed to be completed to perform jumps, and this really messed me up during the beginning of the game. During development, the developers had an extremely short deadline to release, but luckily they also doubled their staff. This shows in the quality of the gameplay itself. Instead of building a new engine from the ground up, the crew decided to tweak and improve Laura little by little due to their time constraints. This would include giving her some new abilities such as mid-air direction changing flips which look badass, but can also help a lot during combat and even sometimes during puzzles. Laura can now climb certain walls horizontally and vertically, even flipping off of them. A lot of flips in this game. Driving vehicles. Yes, that's right. Laura drives two different kinds of vehicles in this game a boat in Venice, and a snowmobile in Tibet, both of which are used to solve time-based puzzles and jumps. My favorite addition to this series is the ability to use zip lines. It is so infrequent in the game until literally the last two levels that I had forgotten you need to hold the button down to use them, otherwise Laura will just let go. A negative change to this game is the enemies, and this is where I had the biggest issues with the game. Again, compared to the first one, the enemies in Tomb Raider 1 were all melee based and would beeline towards you, forcing you to retreat with backflips while also watching your footing. This allowed a sense of tension felt in each encounter. The only enemies with projectile attacks were the human bosses and the Atlanteans. Now imagine 90% of the enemies in the game having projectile attacks. That's Tomb Raider 2. Laura's main enemies in this game are humans with the worst looking muscle designs I have ever seen. These dudes look like extras in Hellraiser, and apart from a few of them carrying melee weapons such as bats and wrenches, almost every enemy has a weapon. Silenced pistols, Uzis, shotguns, dual revolvers, flamethrowers... Lions and tigers and... Shut up! <laughs> Their accuracy is so spot on that they will be able to snipe you from floors above, through walls, and even while you're flipping. This makes each fight with the human enemies a grind, where you occasionally have to pause mid-fight just to use a medkit, then continue just to maybe kill the enemy, or maybe have to use another medkit. This is due to the fact that enemies are still bullet sponges, and the worst part is, most enemies are put in places where you're forced to take hits before you can begin attacking, such as while climbing ledges or while you're in the water. Remember in Tomb Raider 1, most of the deaths came from misplaced jumps or dangerous traps? Since enemies like to spawn behind corners and at the bottoms of ledges or perched high above, you need to save now more than ever. I racked a total 516 saves during my playthrough. Laura does have an increased weapon selection in this game to fight these new threats, which is pretty cool. She starts off with her classic dual pistols and eventually finds the automatic pistols which replace the magnums. 
Laura then gets the shotgun, her Uzis, an M16, grenade launcher, and a harpoon gun. I thought the M16 was great, but it kind of limits your movement, which can be life or death sometimes. As for the harpoon gun... You're shit out of luck. I could not, for the life of me, kill anything with this. If you have not played the first one before playing this sequel, it can be a bit difficult. They throw you in this game with some ridiculous puzzles and traps to the point where I literally found myself saying, this is impossible, I'll have to shut off the traps and come back later. Yeah, no. You must be able to get through these traps through sheer skill. Some trap rooms just require a little bit of observation where you might be able to find a safe path around the traps. Once you do overcome that trap room, however, you feel a sense of victory. All this is due to the creators making this game for returning players. For players who know the controls, who understand the logic behind Lara's world. As much as I can praise this game for its accomplishments, there are a few glaring issues I, I can't overlook. The first thing I will mention isn't much of an issue, but more of a personal gripe. Some of the solutions in this game aren't as simple as you may think, and I needed a walkthrough on this game a few times. I got stuck once because I couldn't see the exit as it was blending into the background a little too well, kind of like the first game, but not much of an issue in this one. But in one case, the biggest reason was actually because the solution was fucking stupid. For example, early on, Laura is in Venice where she needs to find a speedboat that is needed to exit the level. The exit, however, closes on itself after a few seconds, and is also guarded by a couple of sea mines which blow Laura to pieces. How do you get past these mines? Well, you have to jump out of your boat at the last second and use the speedboat to set off the mines safely. But now you're in a dilemma because you need the speedboat to reach the exit in time, but now you don't have a speedboat. You have to know that there was a speedboat earlier on in the game that you have to bring with you in order to complete the mission. The issue here wasn't just that you needed to know that you can find a second boat, but the fact that the game does not tell you that you can drive vehicles since there were no tips, no notifications, or button prompts. And since there are other boats around the level that you can't drive, it's normal to assume that they're all just decorations. I'm sure the PS1 manual mentioned driving vehicles, but since we're playing in the year 2021 AD on PC, we don't have those anymore, thank you very much. My point is, so much is left unsaid that they just expect the player to know and this can set you back quite a bit. My second gripe with Tomb Raider 2 is the backtracking. Oh my god, the backtracking. Almost every level takes anywhere from 45 to 60 minutes to complete. And this is basically how each level is broken down. You start off in a large area and you need to find your way. You'll come across a, lark a locked door? You'll come across a locked door so you figure you'll need a key. You find a key, open the door and find a button inside. This button opens a door in a completely different area that you haven't even seen yet, and you need to make your way there now. Rinse and repeat. Find A to place in B. It does get a bit old, but being that each level is so varied and diverse, it's not always an issue. But when the map is large and you find yourself running back and forth five times over, it is legitimately exhausting. I was genuinely surprised at how different the visuals look in this game. Each location, as mentioned earlier, is so unique, and never do any two places feel the same unless it's set inside of the same building or location, but even then it's still varied in its own decorations and layouts. The best looking location in the game probably has to be the sunken liner. The thought and detail is pretty unique for its time. The sunken ship is overturned, so as you explore it, you'll notice that there are chandeliers on the floor instead of the ceiling. Just look at these two images side by side, and the differences you can tell are night and day. The FMVs in the game are still fun to watch and still flood you with that wave of nostalgia. The enemy designs, on the other hand, though, are hilarious and terrifying at the same time. They're blocky and polygonal, but they're all supposed to be muscular, and it, it just it, it looks bad. It, it, ugh. Gross. While Lara, on the other hand, has had a bit of an upgrade herself. 
Her braid has its own physics, which, believe me, on the PS1, this was mind-blowing. Not only that, Tomb Raider 2 is the first game to start the Barbie tradition. What this means is Laura going through many different costume changes throughout the series from here on in. You have Scuba Laura, Bomber Jacket Laura, Camo Laura, and so on. Keeping in the style of the first game, they center a lot of the music around classical orchestra, which again fits Laura's personality perfectly. The music is another great soundtrack to listen to, and there was this one track that, that really stuck out to me. Not because it was epic or captivating, but because it was quite scary. The voice acting in the game is good, as this time Laura is voiced by Judith Gibbons, who would also return for Tomb Raider 3. Shelley Blonde was unable to return as she was preoccupied with other projects, but she did allow the crew to reuse audio clips from the first game. This is why when Lara picks items up, uh -huh. runs into walls and sounds like the death sound from Roblox, uh -huh. and continues to reject your advances, no. it's still Shelley Blonde's voice. Judith Gibbons does a good job voicing Lara, but lacks some of the innocence you can hear in Shelley's portrayal. There is quite a bit of dialogue exchange that happens in this game, and I don't know if it was my setup or what, but some of it was kind of hard to understand, or the background noise was fighting with the voice volume too much. Overall, how does Lara's second adventure fare in comparison to her predecessor? There were many things in Tomb Raider 2 that I could see right away that could justify it being the fan favorite in the series. And no, I don't just mean the epic shower scene ending. The visuals were enhanced as more detail was placed into the grid system, even so far as to giving the game a proper sky texture. The story was intriguing and carried you across the world. Again, I found myself saying, it's 5 in the morning, I, I need to go to sleep, and then end up exploring the next level until sunrise. Each location is unlike the last, and none of them really overstay their welcome. I know I said at the beginning of this video that Tomb Raider 2 is like a caramel drizzled cheesecake and too much sweetness is a bad thing. This makes it sound like there is no wrong. Let me correct this analogy. Tomb Raider 2 is like a caramel drizzled cheesecake that you get to eat and enjoy, but only while someone punches you in the shoulder until you're finished. Sure, the cheesecake is good, but it's a struggle to get through. Tomb Raider 2 took me around 17 to 18 hours to beat. You lie. Would I do it again? I, I definitely need a break, but in a few years? Absolutely. Tomb Raider 2 was a thrill ride and continues to show why the Tomb Raider series will go down in history as one of the greatest series of all time. Don't you think you've seen enough? Overall, I give Tomb Raider 2 four and a half big beef jerky henchmen out of five. It does have many improvements over its predecessor, but it does have a few steps back as well. This is mainly due to the difficulty and unfairness of the enemies, and how you just kind of have to tough it out, as there is no difficulty select. As for games I would let my son play, if you remember the score in the last video, sorry buddy, as I believe full enjoyment of this game will come from careful planning and execution. As for nostalgia value, that shower scene <coughs> <coughs> that shower scene has stuck with me my entire childhood. I remember the first time seeing it, my, my young heart's pounding, thinking I'm going to see Laura naked, and then she just turns and shoots the camera guy. Why, Laura, why? He was just doing his job. This is also when I began to notice, though, that this is when they started to over-sexualize Laura, and the more they did it, the more the series would begin to go downhill. But we'll find out more about, we'll find more from in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like. Leave a comment down below for what you think about the Tomb Raider series and for other games you'd like to see me review as well. Hit that subscribe button as it definitely helps me out. And ring that bell if you'd like to be notified whenever I make a new upload. Also, don't forget to check out Ellie's channel down in the description below for this amazing cover as well as many other great covers. Alright, so I gotta get this out of the way. Recently, I've been gaining a lot of subscribers, and thank you guys so much. 
it it means the entire world to me I, it really does mean a whole lot and i want to keep making this content i want to do as best as i can to make sure that the content you guys watch is fun entertaining and maybe even informative especially to all you young dads out there so i have to get this out of the way too if you would like to see me uh play games i actually stream on twitch at young dilf gaming Young Dad Gaming was already taken, probably by me. I just forgot to log in. So Young Dilf Gaming at Twitch, if you want to come uh, play games with me, chat with me, you can chat with me on my Facebook page at Young Dad Gaming on Facebook. And yeah, just uh, the more you guys reach out to me, the more you contact me, it, it means a lot to me. It's a lot of fun talking to you guys as well. And yeah, that's basically all that. So the next video we got coming up might be a little bit of a Valentine's Day surprise, albeit a bit late. But until then, I will see you guys on the other side. Bye bye!